Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2022 Chevrolet Colorado. So this is what our trailer hitch looks like installed. This actually has a hidden cross tube design, which means the cross tube is actually tucked away behind the bumper here. So the only thing we can see is the actual receiver tube, which makes for the best overall appearance. Now what we can see has a nice shiny black powder coated finish, which is going to help it blend in with the vehicle well. It's also going to help protect our hitch from rust. So our receiver here does have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is an industry standard size. Now this is going to allow for a greater variety of those hitch mounted accessories to choose from, such as the bike racks and cargo carries and even ball mounts. So on the side of the receiver tube, we're going to have a 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. That's going to work great with your industry standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now keep in mind the hitch pin and clip don't actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your aftermarket accessories are actually going to come with their own. So you shouldn't need to worry about buying this separately, but if you do need one, we have plenty of options. And then on the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those work great with both the larger Clevis style as well as the smaller S-type hooks. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is going to provide us with an 8,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. It also has an 800 pound ton weight rating, which is going to be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is actually tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the vehicle or the hitch. So a couple measurements for you guys here they are going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. You're looking at about 19 and a quarter inches, and that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. You're looking at about one and three quarter inches, and that'll be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the folded up position, they don't hit the vehicle. With that being said, with such a short distance there, I don't think you guys will have any issue at all with those accessories. So in regards to installation, this one is pretty straightforward. There's no modifying to the vehicle whatsoever. It does, however, require you to remove a bumper structure underneath, which then in turn leaves your bumper to hang free. So that may kind of scare some of you guys away, but it's really not that bad at all. As long as you have a, a good way of supporting the bumper here, such as a couple sets of jack stands, it's really not that big of a deal at all. And as we said, it is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much gonna take common hand tools, so nothing too crazy. There is going to be one thing you're going to need you may not have, and that's a torque wrench. And in which case, you can actually rent these for free from most local auto parts stores. But I would say give yourselves around an hour or two, depending on your experience level. You don't need a lift or anything. It's actually a little bit easier to do this one on the ground than it is in the air. But let's go ahead and walk you through this entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation is we do need to lower our spare tire and temporarily remove it. Now the tools you need to do this are actually located inside your vehicle, so if you need help with this, make sure to reference your owner's manual, but we're going to be using some tools here we have in the shop designed specifically for this. So once we have our spare tire out of the way, we're going to get our vehicle, we're going to get underneath our vehicle here, and there is a bracket just sort of directly above where that spare tire was that we need to remove. So this is what that bracket looks like. It's held in place with four bolts. We have two down here and then two over here. So we're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and remove those four bolts so we can get our bracket out of the way. There we go. So we've got our bracket and our hardware off. Now we can keep this if we want or we can discard it because we won't be reinstalling it on the vehicle. What we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna raise the spare tire back up into position. So now we're ready to remove this cross section here so we have to remove this cross section because our factory or our hitch is actually going to be replacing this. So before we do that, we need to make sure that we properly support the bumper because once we remove the bolts to this thing, our bumper is going to be free as well. So what I went ahead and did is I just took a pole jack on either side. There's a nice flat surface under the bumper you can attach it to. This is probably going to be a little bit easier since you guys are on the ground. So you could just use a couple sets of jack stands. So we have the bumper supported from falling down. We also need to support it from tipping back. So that's where these little ratchet straps or cam buckle straps come into play. I just have them wrapped around the bumper and then hooked onto the bracing underneath the vehicle there. Make sure you avoid this cross member here because again, it will be coming down. 
So now there's going to be four bolts holding the cross tube or the cross section in, in place on either side here. So the locations of the bolts are going to be one here, one down here, and then we have two on the sides here. So we're going to go ahead and remove four from each side there. In regards to removing them, we're going to need a 21 millimeter socket. And you're also going to want to use a breaker bar because those are fairly large bolts and I believe they have Loctite on them as well. So let's go ahead and get those out now. So we're down to one bolt left holding on our cross beam to the vehicle. So over on the passenger side, you're going to notice there is a wiring harness connected to that. So we do need to remove it. It's right there. We're just going to take a trim panel tool and we're just going to pry that off. So now with all the hardware removed, it does take a little bit of force to bring it down because it is still a friction fit on the side of the frame, but now we can go ahead and set this aside. Keep in mind, this won't be reinstalled. So now that we have our cross member out of place, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and clean each of our eight weld nuts, four on each side. So the reason we're going to be cleaning these is there's a lot of leftover Loctite in there we want to try to get out. So the best way to clean it is to take a spray lubricant and then a nylon wire brush. Just simply spray some lubricant in the hole there. Then you'll take your wire brush and just run it through there a couple times to get as much of that gunk out as we can. We're going to do this for each of our eight attachment holes. So now with an extra set of hands, we can lift our hitch up into position. Keep in mind, this bracket here is going to go between the bumper plate and the outside of the frame. And we will be securing it using our factory hardware. So I've got one bolt in on the bottom on each side now holding it in place. Keep in mind it's just loosely installed. We don't have them ran down yet. I'm going to go ahead and install the other two bolts on the bottom so we have a total of four bolts holding the hitch up for now. So now that we have the four bolts on the bottom end, we're going to go ahead and install the two ones on the side of each side now. In order to get these to line up, chances are you're going to have to move your bumper a little bit just so the holes in the flanges line up with the holes in the frame there. So don't be afraid to move the bumper a little bit while you're doing this, but we'll go ahead and get our side bolts in now. Now it is a good idea to sort of just step back and look at your bumper here because we do have some slight adjustments we can make in regards to the angle of that. So just make sure it's sitting straight and level on the vehicle. But once you've done that, then you can sort of secure everything finally. So now that we have all of our fasteners snugged up, the only thing left to do is to come back with our torque wrench here and torque down each of our fasteners to the specifications listed in your instructions. And now with everything torqued down, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2022 Chevrolet Colorado.